Hey, Mike. So, uh, where are you calling from? I am in, it, out of, just outside of the Baltimore airport. We're playing Frederick, Maryland tonight, with, which is uh, the Frederick Fair. And so I, so I read where you just released this uh, Made in California box set, uh, and I'm curious what made you want to do another, you know, compilation of, uh, of music. Well, you know, uh, our record company, Capitol Records, got acquired by Universal Music Group, and I think they were, uh, you know, they've been contemplating a, a box set for a while now. And what they did is they went through all of our stuff, I mean, uh, our, all the archival stuff, and found several uh, recordings and versions of recordings that had never been uh, released before. So they came up with this uh, yearbook concept, and uh, it's quite an attractive package anyway. And, and they have, I think it was, I think I believe they have, you know, 50 or 60 unreleased masters on there, one of which we're doing in our show these days. It's called Going to the Beach. It's a song we recorded back in the late 70s when we were doing an album concept called um, uh, Keeping the Summer Alive, a song that my cousin Carl uh, wrote with Randy Bachman of uh, BTO. Anyway, so yeah, Going to the Beach is something we're playing in our show. It's really catchy and it's, it's a neat song. I, I can't believe we never uh, never played it before. But then we had recorded a bunch of songs for the album, and and that one just never made the album at that time. And uh, here it is now. Uh, we're playing it years later uh, on our shows, and it's on on the box set. So it's it's a fun song too. We, we're doing going to the beach into surfing USA for our encore. And so it must be a, kind of a unique thing for you to have sort of like, you know, a brand new song like that. I mean, well, I mean, you had the new album a few years ago, but, you know, you're pre- usually performing songs you've been performing for a long, you know, a long time. So it must be kind of a, a cool thing to be doing. It's really nice to, to do something that uh, people have never heard before. And and uh, it, 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 it uh, goes well with everything else we're doing, too. Another thing we're doing, which we haven't done in years, as we're doing Wild Honey, uh, uh, which is a great song. It rocks. I mean, uh, our drummer is John Cowsill, um, the youngest member of the family group, the Cowsills, who had some big hits in the late 60s, early 70s. And he's an amazing drummer, but he's also an incredibly good singer. And he he that that's, he tears it up on that song. So... Uh, that's kind of neat. We're we're doing that song, which we haven't done in years, and I think some of the longtime fans are are pretty pleased to hear that one added back into our set list. And, uh, you know, last year you had the big uh, celebration for the 50th anniversary. So, what was that experience like to be, you know, be marking that milestone? Well, I mean, it made sense. I mean, 50 years as a group is a long time, you know. Of course, Brian Wilson has, my cousin Brian has his own group and has been touring for maybe a decade and a half uh, uh, um, his way with, with, with a really good group that he has. And I've, of course, been touring uh, with Bruce Johnson and John Castle and my son uh, Christian Love and the rest of the guys in, in our band and we do do our thing. But that was it was great we we got a chance to be together in the studio and come up with an album as well as to do some pretty high profile um shows um unfortunately that that kind of configuration costs a lot of money it was it was you know a lot of musicians involved a lot of production costs involved and it precludes you from doing a lot of things that I like to do um, you know, some smaller venues and theaters as and you know, well as fairs like we're doing tonight and and um uh, yeah, so it was it was good and it was also limiting. So we're back to doing things the way we've been doing them for the last uh, decade and a half ourselves. Is there any any chance you'll perform again with Brian and Al? I, I think people were excited to see you guys all together. 
Yeah, I don't know. We'll see. I mean, they're probably, you know, Al's joined Brian on, on some shows, and so they're, they're doing some stuff together. And uh, I hear they went in the studio together, but I, you know, uh, so they're doing, they're keeping active, and, and so are we. So, uh, but there's no, there's no plans for any anything, any getting together at, at this point in time. I haven't heard any anyway. But are people, I mean, was there any kind of a rift or just sort of a, sounds like a business decision or? Well, um, I don't know. There's just different ways of doing things, different philosophies, different ways of touring, you know. I mean, you're limited by if you have that big a, a cost to, to where you can go and what you can do. And so now that you've have crossed the fifty year mark, um, you know, what what keeps you out there and what do you think about the future? What do you what do you still want to do as the Beach Boy? Well, um, you know, the Beach Boy is a phenomenon. I mean the music has been popular for so many years and you know it seems like every year there's another Beach Boy song and a major motion picture soundtrack or two. And uh, you know, we're one of the most performed groups on on um, on classic radio, oldies radio. You know the Beatles, the Beach Boys, and and all the Motown uh, acts are the most performed at, at, on at oldies radio. So we're always in the public ear somehow. And you know when you're a musician and when you're a songwriter and singer. And you've had the good fortune to have a lot of great hits, and people will still want to hear them. It's it's kind of second nature, you know. I've grew up in a household uh, that had a grand piano, an organ, and a harp, and and music was just a you know a, a daily reality in our lives. And and on special occasions, we'd all get together. The families would get together, the Wilsons and the Loves, and my mom was one of eight children and her her brother was Murray Wilson, the father of Dennis Brian Dennis and Carl Wilson. So we were always getting together for Christmas parties, Thanksgiving, for uh for uh, you know, uh, birthday parties and, and just just recitals of various types of music. And so, you know, it's just been a lifelong um pursuit is, is music and, we, and of course my cousin Brian and I are about a year apart um, and we grew up together singing Everly Brothers songs and the doo-wop songs and he became uh, a big fan of the four freshmen and broke down their harmonies and that you know we learned a few of those uh, uh, arrangements and so the, that's the thing that's always distinguished the Beach Boys, I think, from so many other groups is the refined harmonies. There's a definite sound there. And that along with, you know, creating some songs that really caught on, uh, that, you know, it's, it's allowed uh, what otherwise would have been a hobby to become a profession and a long-lasting one, too. And not just in the United States. It's pretty amazing. We get... You know, we've gone to Australia and South Africa and all over Europe, Japan. Uh, our music has taken us all around the world, you know, which is kind of a theme of the song California Girls in 1965, which I wrote the words and Brian came up with the music. So, you know, it's just, uh, uh, you know, it's kind of like Tony Bennett is, what, 87 now? And he's at the top of his game. He's He sings great, and people love his style, his music. And it's a, a similar thing with the Beach Boys, you know, where our music has stood the test of time, and people still love it. Multiple generations will come out to see the Beach Boys, and, and uh, you know, grandparents and and, and grandchildren and everybody in between. So it's it's a phenomenon. It definitely is, but it's a blessing also for those of us uh, that that grew up, you know, appreciating music and, and singing and 
playing and and uh and just for the sheer enjoyment of it and are blessed enough for it to become a a livelihood you know it's if you think about it it's a pretty special thing i mean they're not you know they're not a whole lot of people who get to do what we've done for the amount of time we've done it and to achieve the level of success we have even in spite of our you know our less than perfect situation you know uh, uh, there's, there's dysfunctionalities uh, in my, you know, my cousin uh, Dennis. He, he got involved with alcohol and and various drugs, and and his life ended way earlier than it should have. And of course, my cousin Carl, he passed away 15 years ago of, of um, due to lung cancer. I mean, he started smoking when he was like 12 years old or something, and. And uh, those are, you know, tragedies and 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 you know, things that are really awful to deal with emotionally and stuff. But then every family has issues, you know. So what what you got going there? <laughs> I'm sorry. What did you say? Yeah, every, but every family has issues, and we certainly had them as well. And and you know that. Uh, the biggest negative was for me was in this it, along the way has been the drug use uh, that, that some of the guys and uh, got involved with and it uh, certainly didn't help things. And but uh, but the the overarching story is the Beach Boys music has meant so much to so many people and we continually get feedback and compliments and remarks from people that how their music is really given them so much pleasure over the years or gotten them through some hard times and um people from that served in Vietnam uh have said lots of times how their music was like uh brought them a sense of home and one guy even said well thank you for saving my life i mean just some amazing you know feedback from people uh, uh you know which makes you feel good that you've done something that that meant something to people and gave them uh, a source of pleasure and happiness. 